All right, guys, welcome back. So in today's question, we have another question from chapter two, and we have this a rectangular plate that is supported by hinges along its side BC and by the cable A. If the cable tension is 300 Newton, we need to determine the projection onto line BC of the force exerted on the plate by the cable. And E is in the midpoint of the horizontal upper edge of the structural support. So what we have in here would be exactly on the midpoint. So before we start, we're going to call our X, Y, Z as I'm showing in here. Now let's, let's get to the question. So first of all, we know that this force or the tension in the cable A is 300 Newton. So first of all, let's find the tension in a vector form. And for that, if we call it T, what we need to do, as we covered in the previous videos, uh, what we need to find is first we need to find the magnitude, which from the question we know is 300 Newton. And the other thing we need is the unit vector. And our unit vector in here is from A to E, which we call it NA. And that would be in a vector form too. So uh, one simple way to find the unit vector is that, so first of all, we have T times, or finding the N A E, we simply have A E in a vector form divided by its magnitude. And for finding the A E, all we need to do is to find the coordinates of the endpoint, which is E, and subtract that by the coordinates of starting point, which is A. And that's how we get the AE and we have to go with our X, Y, and Z. So let's consider our origin at the point A. So this will be our Y, this will be our X, and we'll have this as our Z. And first thing we need to find in here is to find the X component of point E. If we look at it, we'll see that we are going from A to B, which is minus, uh, 400 millimeter so that would be the x component for e and our x for a would be simply zero because we are we are putting the origin at point a so there is no i component that would be our i let's move on to our y for point e if we look at y we'll see that what we are moving is exactly the half point of this side that i'm showing in here and if we want to figure that out, we have one angle that can help us for finding this side. And that angle is the 25 degrees that we have in here. And if we look at and if we look at this right triangle that I'm highlighting in blue. And we have this as our right angle. So for finding that side, we simply have the hypotenuse which is 1200 newton uh, 1200 millimeter times cosine of 25 degrees and whatever we have for this divided by 2 would be the coordinate or the y uh, component of e so simply we have 1200 cosine of 25 divided by 2 and if we calculate that it would be 600 cosine of 25 and let's see what we have for a since we put our origin at point a there is no j component and last one is the z component so it makes a lot of sense to put our origin at point a uh, we can put our origin wherever we want but in that case what we need to do is basically find, finding the coordinates of point B. And the last part is the Z component of point E, which is what we need to find in here. And this would be simply this time 1200 sine of 25 degrees. So we'll have 1200 times sine of 25 degrees, and this will be our K. Now that we have this, uh, we're good to go to find the unit vector for T. And we simply have 300 times uh, minus 400 I. Uh, 600 cosine of 25 will be plus 
544 and the last one is 1200 sine of 25 which will be 507 okay and for finding the magnitude what we have is just the square root of x squared which is minus 400 squared plus 544 squared plus 507 squared and that's that's everything for finding the tension in the cable and if we do that we'll get t 300 times if we divide uh, each of those by the denominator we get minus 0 0.474 i we'll get plus 644 j and we'll have 0 0.601 for k. so that was the first part and for finding the projection onto line bc of the force uh what we need to what we need to find is uh we also need the the unit vector for bc2 because if we want to find the projection of the force t on the line bc what we need to find is that if we call the projection tbc we have the scalar product of d and the unit vector for bc uh, so far we found t and what we need to find in here is the unit vector for bc and for bc what we need to find is uh, we'll have the same thing we have the coordinates of c minus b and that way we just need to find the the scalar component so with this way let's uh find how we can bc we will have the same thing again we have bc over the magnitude and for this we need to find d again for finding bc we need coordinates of endpoint which is c subtracted by coordinates of b and that way we can find uh, bc uh, so let's start with the x of point c uh let's see what we can get for x so if we if we look at this we'll see that x of b and c are the same since since they are in the y z plane so the x of each of them which was minus 400 will be cancelled so we simply have minus 400 minus minus 400 which will be zero so uh, there is no x as we expected and let's see what we have for y uh, so the y point of uh, the y component of point b is uh, zero but the y point for the uh, point c will be 1200 cosine of 25 so we'll have 1200 cosine of 25 and as I said, there is no Y for point B. And let's move on to the K components of point C. And if you look at, we'll have 1200 sine of 25, sine of 25, and that would be our K. And again, there is no K component for point B. And if you look at here, we'll see we simply have uh, 1200 cosine of 25 uh, squared plus 1200 sine of 25 squared and we know that uh, from the geometry sine squared of x plus cosine uh, square root of x equals to zero and if you factor 1200 from here we will have what we have uh, in the denominator is 1200 squared cosine of and we have the same thing for the sine of 25 degrees and if we factor 1200 squared, we simply have cosine of, uh, sorry, 25 plus, sine. and this will be one. And what we have at the end will be 1200. Uh, we will have the square root of 1200, which will be 1200 
and the 1200 from the top of the ratio will be cancelled out with the bottom of the ratio and what we, what we get at the end will be uh, simply for j we have cosine of 25 degrees and we'll have sine of 25 degrees for k And now we have our unit vector in a uh, vector form as well. And all we need to do is coming back in here and finding um, this scalar product of T and NBC. And after that, we'll get the final answer. And for doing that, we simply have the x component so let's call it tbc again we'll have t dot nbc uh, for this we simply multiply i components together same for j and same for k and if, if we look at the i component of tbc we'll see that for we have minus uh, what we have in here we have minus um, 0 0.474 times x of nbc which uh, is zero so we have zero let's move on to the j so for j here we have 0 0.6 uh, actually 300 times 0 0.644 so we have 300 times 6.44 times the j component of nbc which is cosine of 25 degrees and last one we have 300 uh, what we have here 0 0.601 times sine of 25 degrees which is the z component of n and all we need to, to do is to calculate this and if we do that, we'll get 251 Newton. And that would be the final answer for this question. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, this can help me to grow the channel. And I will see you guys next time.